right, here we go. This will be the beginning of, or the intro for part seven. I don't know, uh, doesn't really seem like we got a whole lot done since part six, but uh, I guess maybe I've just been running circles around this thing. bring in here and show you what we got all right so where we left off from part six we've got the fixture in here I got these a pillar slash roof tubes laid in here I'm really happy with my fixture so far uh, what we got to do now is go ahead and cut up or cut and bend and notch this front brow tube and then what I want to do, um, this fixture I went ahead and I notched in the design, I notched this center saddle for the center roof tube that comes up this way and connects into the, to the brow tube. There's a bin, goes down. That's a tricky little notch right there. It's a tricky little, it's a tricky part of the build. Um, takes some time, takes some doing. Um, but anyway, so I notched the fixtures so that I can lay those roof tubes and the roof brace tubes in there um, with the fixture in place so I don't have to move anything else. I can go ahead and mock everything up, make sure everything's squared up, and then put those roof brace tubes in. And uh, so that's going to go across the top. There's one goes from front to back down to the brow tube, and then there's some diagonals that go from the center back up to right here at the a pillar post or the a pillar support i mean and then there's another one that goes you know both sides so they're symmetrical the one thing i didn't do and i didn't even think about it when i was designing these fixtures is i have a relief in here for those diagonal uh, roof brace tubes um, and this relief is meant for the back this one in front is not gonna work because they come out to this area here. So what I gotta do is take a grinder and just go ahead and modify these because this area right here is gonna need to be relieved so that tube can come in through here and it butts up right behind this brow tube that goes across the front here. So that's where we're at. We're gonna get after it. Okay. Got out the uh, JD Squared Model 32 bender to uh, bend up the brow tube and the center roof tube. After I get these bent, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try a new process, which is uh, using the uh, Bentec uh, cut wrappers for these tubes. See, it says right here, hole saw cutter info. Hole saw information not available for this cross member as it is cut to an arc, which is precisely why I'm using these cut wrappers. Because last time I did one of these bent door bars or bent brow bars like this, I had to do three of them before I could get, before I got the notches right by hand. So back to the time lapse. Uh, the cut wrappers are a tool or a feature that's included with the Bentec uh, software, and what what it is is they give you a uh, a printout for each coat on on a given tube, and uh, it's a little bit of a process, but it's actually pretty quick. Once you get that that uh, template cut out with some scissors, it's pretty easy to line up on the tube and. Uh, use it for your copes and the reason I went ahead and tried to use this uh, 
the cut wrapper uh, method here is because these particular copes fall on a uh, bend. They fall on a bend on their, uh, their home tube or whatever you want to call it. The intersecting tube is on a bend. So um, that's why I decided to use this new process in hopes to save me a little bit of time in uh, grinding and, and coping by hand or coping with a regular hole saw because you're trying to make a cope land on several different planes when it's when when the cope is is joining in and landing on a bend I'm trying to use my words but it doesn't seem to be coming out too good so after i got those copes down and got the new roof tubes in place i quickly learned that uh, i needed to relieve more of the fixture jig to get those tubes to lay in place the way i needed them to Okay, what I had to do was relieve these areas or these saddles where the diagonals come through the jig. And I wanted this jig to be able to remain in place while I got these roof tubes up here and supported them so that they're all on the same plane. And uh, hindsight, I, I should have just I could have just taken these down or brought the plasma torch over here and just cut these relieves out, but I did it with a cutoff wheel and a flap disc. And it looks like a hack job, but hey, it works. And uh, you know, this might be version 1.0 of this jig. Now I know what it needs to look like and where these tubes are laying in. And uh, so at this point, and the reason why I wanted to get these tubes in here is because I'm kind of doing, I'm kind of doing something that's kind of unknown to me, which is good and bad at the same time. I had these cross tubes CNC cut. And the reason being is because these notches again, especially like in here is a, a pretty severe notch. It's really long and pretty complicated because of the fact that this notch falls on this bin where the A pillar is. So um, what that does, what that does, however, is it gives me a gauge and it lets me know exactly where this brow tube that comes through here. Let me zoom out and right on top of everything. This brow tube that comes from here down and then back up to here it kind of lets me know where that brow tube is supposed to fall rather than measuring 14 times and trying to figure out where it's supposed to be. I know my roof line is squared up or pretty damn square. Okay, here we go. We are moving along at a snail's pace here. Um, I don't know about some of you guys, but uh, I have a tendency to feel like I need to get things done. Got to go, got to go, got to go. And in this situation, you really got to take your time, slow down, measure things, um, make sure that everything is hitting the marks the way you want it. Uh, I got this, I got this jig done and it's working the way I want to, or I want it to, but there are a few things that I've noticed and I've got you set up to where you can line of sight the body down the body line here and uh, one of the things that I noticed since I got the jig up is I've got my spacing correct on my a pillar and roof tubes but uh, this angle here is not the same on both sides and what I mean by that, and I'll show you here. So the body line, this is all in the same plane, okay? So I can put a straight edge, or in this case, my plumb bar or level, 
up against there and all these tubes are on the same plane. If I take my straight edge on my level and I mark a reference point from the front of the cab tube or the, uh, the front of the door bar, I guess, to here and make it the same on both sides. And reference or, or lay this uh, plumb bar or this level. I'm, I'm just going to call it straight edge because we're using it as a straight edge right now. Or lay this, this straight edge on at the same place on both the driver and passenger side and measure distance here from the roof tube to the inside of the straight edge. I'm getting different measurements on both pa passenger side and driver side. So again, what I was trying to say earlier, I have a tendency to feel like I got to get things done. I got to be making progress. It's really easy to throw something together, especially since I've got a lot of these tubes already cut, coped and ready to go. But it's the little things that make the big difference. And I guess what I'm trying to say is what I'm going to do now is I need to get the edges of this jig equal distant so that the angle of these tubes is the same on both sides. It looks the same. This tube back here is within a half a degree, but for some reason when I measure with that straight edge off of here in relation to this vertical plane on the door bar, they're considerably different, like three quarters of an inch, which is way too much. Um, and I want to make that right. So my tendency to get things done, I've, I've got to put myself in check and just slow down and take my time, even though in my mind, I'm not physically seeing progress. I'm not visually seeing progress because this thing's looked the same for the last uh, two videos now, or maybe three, two. Um, so yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is take your time, measure a bunch, check it 16 different ways till Sunday and, uh, and make sure you're happy with it because once you start tacking things together, it's a real pain in the ass to undo things and, uh, you find things that are, uh, when they're not right, it's just a snowball effect. Um, if you keep on going with it, even a quarter of an inch here and you make concessions, you keep on going with it, it'll end up being an inch at the end or more. And, uh, as a maker, as a builder, you always have that in the back of your mind, you know, yeah, it looks cool, but you know, the craftsman always sees his imperfections and his flaws where nobody else does. And, uh, your pride and workmanship, uh, should be above that and uh, anyway we'll party on here like I said we're moving along at a snail's pace but this is what you got to do um, if I was a big shop and everything was CNC cut and fabricated I'd have all these fixtures figured out and they'd be 100% uh, <clears throat> on the money but being that this fixture is new to me and I'm still trying to noodle through uh, or work my way through how to use this to best suit me. Um, there's still adjustments that need to be made. And uh, like I said earlier, this might be version 1.0 and there might be a version 2.0, 3.0, who knows? We're always evolving, we're always changing, we're always trying to make things better. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna work on getting these equal distant from the door bar on both sides, which will put the roof tubes equal distant, you know, as the roof pinches in. So hopefully that makes sense. That's my sermon on that.
and we're going to keep on moving forward. Okay, so I basically spent the rest of my afternoon checking this roof line and make sure, making sure things were squared up and equal distant. Uh, I didn't record a closeout for this video, but as always, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you next time.